Well, hello friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Nugget Project where we're working on our AW11 MR2. So this is a continuation on of the rust repairs. So the last episode of rust repairs, we kind of, uh, we did two patches. One was terrible, one was pretty good. And um, yeah, just learning how to weld and everything. And I'm finding welding very difficult. Um, I've had a few problems with earths and things like that and just contamination. Look, welding is not easy and I'm getting advice and I'm getting there slowly. So it's cool. Um, Today, the first thing we're gonna tackle is in the uh, wheel arch of the passenger side. There is some rust in the wheel arch there. I've cut it out already and it is thicker steel, so it's 1.6. You can see down here, I've got a sheet of 1.6. So we're gonna put that in there. Basically, just cut the rust out and I'm gonna do a what's called a lap weld. So the patch will actually overlap and it will weld the whole thing and that'll make it nice and strong. What we did in the back there was called a butt weld. <laughs> but. So it's basically the two edges come together like that and you weld and then you grind it flat and you can't see where the patch was in. In the wheel arch, I don't care. There's already a bunch of lap welds in there from um, the factory. So I've, I'm gonna cut a patch that kind of follows the same contours as the other lap welds. And once it's all in there with Raptor liner, you won't be able to see it. And there's a wheel in there and all that. So it'd be fine. It's cool. Um, I have had a few little comments just of people going, you know, why aren't you getting a professional to do this? Um, you know, why don't you take welding lessons or that sort of stuff and pretty much boils down to money and time. So I could, uh, I could get a professional to do this, but it's going to cost probably upwards of eight, nine, ten grand to get all the rust repaired on this car. I don't have that money. If I was going to spend that much money, I may as well just gone and got one that was ready and working. But I wanted a project that I can build myself and I wanted to learn how to do this stuff. And look, I may never get amazing at it, but at least I've given it a go. So... That's it, as for learning how to weld, I'm trying to do it my own time. I run my own business, I've got two kids, I work, all that sort of stuff. I just don't have time to go and do welding classes. I had to look at a couple, but far out, like the, the amount of time you have to dedicate to it, I, I just can't do it. So just gonna be figuring out by myself with help of mates giving me advice, so that's good. Um, there seems to be a bit of a, the, the old Aussie give it a go attitude seems to be dying. I know I sound old saying this, it seems to be dying a little bit. Um, you know, there always used to be this mentality of just, Give it a crack, learn things, do things yourself. And that is really a dying art, I'm not kidding. Like it's, now the attitude is only pay professionals to do things. You know, don't work on your house, don't work on your cars, don't do anything. And sometimes, yeah, obviously playing with electricity, get an expert to do it. But, you know, if you want to build a fence in your front yard, watch YouTube, figure it out, do it yourself. You'll learn something and you'll probably save a lot of money. So, and that's how I feel about this car. You know, yeah, I could just save up thousands and thousands of dollars, but I would have to go to work more and I would not enjoy myself at work. So then I can not enjoy working on the car and somebody else can do it. What's the point? I don't get it. I want to learn how to do all this myself and have fun with it. So here we are, enjoying things and learning as we go. Cool, so let's get stuck into this. We'll go and have a look at that world. Now this video may take uh, a month, it may take six months. So there'll probably be a few videos before this one comes out. It's gonna be all mismatch of water because I wanna try and get the majority of the rust done at least on the chassis, pretty much finished in this video, if possible. So you're gonna see my beard kind of grow, disappear, probably my hair disappear. I'm just gonna get more haggard and wrinkly and old as this video goes on and slowly slip into insanity working on this car. Um, but it would be cool if it, by the end of this video, I will just quickly gloss over a bunch of the repairs, show you some details on some of the more complicated ones. And uh, yeah, we'll get the chassis kind of ready and then we've got a few panels we've got to fix, which we'll do in another video. Um, and then we can move on to more fun things like paint and engines and all that fun stuff. So anyway, let's go and have a look at this wheel arch and see where we're at. Okay, so now we've cut this out. So I've cut out the affected sections, except for this little bit here, because I kind of need something to attach to. So we'll probably cut just this little bit, this really shagged bit, and I'll just weld in a little tab there. Um, this bit's all still good. So yeah, we're gonna make a plate that nicely curved. You can see like the, the curve of these lap joints around here. There's plenty of them, like this one right there. So we'll just do a nice curved plate that'll kind of match all these curves so it won't look out of place. And I might do a little bend here. I'm not too sure yet, I've got to figure out what I want to do. Um, yeah, that basically fits in here and, and covers this up. Now inside, 
if we can see, we can now see inside a chassis rail, which is interesting. So luckily, down the rail looks good. In here, there's a bit of surface rust, but it's really not that much. I've already given it a bit of a clean up. Um, around here, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of rust debris in here, but it's actually from the damage up in that uh, frunk that's fallen down through the gap. So there's nothing bad up in there, it's all good. But I will do, I'm gonna give it a good scrub with a wire brush and then give it a good spray with this uh, rust converter. So that converts rust to organic material that won't, won't go any further and just coat it all and make it nice so I can spray all that in there, give it a good clean up and then that will be nice when we seal it in. Now obviously the problem we've kind of got is when we do that plate, there's no way to paint the back of it. So, some people love this stuff, some people hate it, but I'm kind of stuck with using it, is this stuff. So this is weld through primer. So it's a primer that you can obviously weld through. So we use that on the back of the plate um, and inside all the join here. And then once that's all coated, hopefully that'll stop any sort of rust on there. There is a bit of a, there's a couple of holes. You can see that little hole there. There's another one down there, so I may be able to get a paint nozzle up and just give it a bit of a shh once it's all uh, once it's all together, just to make sure it's got a bit of a coating of paint and it's all happy. But anyway, let's uh, make this plate. You can see this steel, this steel is much uh, stiffer than the rest of the car, so this is a like a big structural bit, which is fine. So we'll obviously it wasn't very structural when it was all full of rust. I mean, there's the there's the bits we cut out. <laughs> so. Well, that's not very structural. So anyway, we're uh, we're making this car stronger again. So we'll, I've just got to try and drill out. There's a little spot weld there holding this little bit on. So I want to get rid of that because that's nasty. Grind that bit off and these bits. Get it all nice and clean. We'll do some rust converter inside and then we'll patch it up. Let's do it. So there's going to be a bit of this going on this episode because this is two weeks later <laughs> i had to go and work and do stuff anyway i have made up a small piece that will fit in there and that's going to fill in that gap right to cut out that little bit of cancer there and then we have our plate so i bent up that angle at work in the hydraulic press and i've bent it somewhat to shape and that will fit in there and so i'll clear all that back and weld all around it and then i'm going to make up See, we've got a gap here. So this actually, that piece there, will hopefully weld somewhat onto that. It's still pretty shitty. And then underneath here, I'm gonna make another plate with another lip here to just strengthen all this up because there is a little bit of cancer there. It's all been treated, it's all fine. But just to strengthen this the best I can. So anyway, I'll clean all this back and I'm gonna have a crack at welding this puppy in. Okay, a couple of minutes later, still not pro welds, but that one there on the end, the light's hiding it, not as bad, not as bad. But to find a clamp, just, just clamp that one back a little bit and I can stitch along here, and now I've got to stitch along the bottom. Yeah, getting there. Still looks like a dog's breakfast, but I'm gonna file it all back and we'll line it with Raptor liner and hopefully no one will ever see it. I'll just have to get some bigger wheels to hide this part of the wheel arch. <laughs> a few minutes later again, and I think we're getting there. I just laid down a few welds there, and I'm not unhappy with that. Once again, still shy compared to what I'm sure a lot of you heroes on the internet can do, but that one looks pretty bloody good. And it's nice having the thicker steel I can actually lay a bead around instead of just spot, spot, spot. So. Yeah, cool, and I've got a couple of spots here just to join the bottom, and then I've got to have to cut this back a bit, and then I've got to get under there and weld that. That's going to be a tricky one, but 
How are we getting there, guys? I call you up to 15 times a day. And even if I don't know what to say, I'll buy you silver diamond rings. So a little bit later and I'm kind of done with this patch. I still have to do a little bit underneath. I have to make a little section here and just fill in a little gap here. Uh, welding upside down sucks. So trying to do this, I've kind of just spot welded along. It's about the best I can do because welding upside down is near impossible, but that seems all fixed up. Look, it's not the prettiest bit down here is okay. I ground it all back because, you know, that's what bad welders do. But uh, look, it's strong as, it's gonna work. And I'm gonna cover it and wrap the liner. So I'm just going to give it a spray now with some etch primer. Just seal it all in, seal in all the goodness. And then uh, I think I might move on to another section before I tackle that little bit underneath because I'm just kind of sick of looking at this area now. So I think I might move on and, and do another patch. So I'll call that done for now. You know what? I'm in a cutting mood. So I am just going to cut some rust out of this car. Say so just doing one patch. So I'm going to chop this section out, clean all that up, get it ready to go. All these bits under here, it's probably going to be too dark to see. Oh, let me get another car with you. These panels here. So I need to chop that out and clean that up. But while I've got access to that, I'm going to use um, this access to clean up the outer panel. So we'll just chop that out for now. Um, same with that side. Need to fix that up, chop that out. Put a little bit in the firewall here. So I'm just going to start chopping up, making patches. See how we go. It's chopping time. Ah, uh, this is the car that keeps on giving. While uh, chopping all the rust out of this section, I just found most of this panel is Bondo. So that's all uh, filler. <laughs> I don't know whether that was to hide the rust. Like somebody's just gonna ask, screw it, I'll just hide the rust with Bondo or whether it's had a shunt. So it's all the way up here too. So I don't know whether they just tried to hide the rust with Bondo or whether it's actually had a hit here. It's same on the other side. So I'm just probably guessing it's probably to hide the rust. Uh, oh well, we'll get rid of all this, we'll try and knock it straightish, and then, uh, yeah, replace that section, replace this lip, and replace the panel on the inside, and then I've got to replace this whole section here. <sighs> Fun times. Masked up because I'm using the wire wheel and there is just so much bondo. So we'll have a look at the ground. So the bondo went all the way up here. I think it was to cover this rust and it looks like somebody has done a repair here before. Um, and that bit's actually good, so yay. This bit is not. And look, the bondo continues. I don't know how far back here it continues, but holy shit. Oh well, we're getting there. Well, that was a couple of hours of being very, very filthy. But we're pretty much prepped now to start repairing this thing. 
So look at this mess. So I think what's happened is there was rust. They have done a repair down here at some point, but they have bondoed everything to try and hide the rust, probably for a roadworthy. So then all the way around here, what a mess. So I've got rid of all the bondo. I've cut out our worst section here, our rusted section. Now I'm gonna cut out this section here, spin it right around that section there. And then, yeah, make up some patch panels. And obviously, yes, there will be some bondo going back on this car because my panel beating and welds won't be that good. And especially down here where the last guy had a crack, um, that's dipped in, so that will need some filler there to cover that up. It's not much I'm gonna do about that. But, you know, God knows how long that was on the car and it looked all right from the outside. So we'll uh, try to minimize how much Bondo will go in this car because I don't like it. But, you know, some of these joins, I'm going to have to do it to make it look nice. So anyway, I'll uh, cut a patch panel out for that. Hopefully it should be, you know, it's a fairly square panel and I do have to replicate. There's that section there. It's got the square hole for um, where the inner liner screw is onto. So I want to replicate that. That sits around there. So yeah, we'll cut that patch out. Um, I need to cut out this rust here and try and separate all this. Unfortunately, there's like a sound deadening rubber crap on the inside of this. So I gotta try and get that out. And I have no idea how, because that's not gonna help my welds. So that's the next problem. Um, yeah, let's keep on going. I have finally fixed this, uh, remember this section here was all cut out and this was all rusty and man this whole area was cactus like this was all bogged, there was rust, rust patches all through it, it's, it's a bloody mess man but I've got it the best I can. So I put in a patch but then I was chasing blow through holes where it was just, uh, this was hard work this section, this, this whole quarter's just a bit crappy but yeah look it's not dead straight. It's not bad though, so we'll put a bit of uh, black primer over it to stop it rusting for now. And um, when it comes time to paint, we'll just have to do a thin layer of bog over that just so we can smooth out all those little dints and those little ripples and stuff. Um, we have a look on the inside here. I do have, this is something I couldn't fix, was a bit of blow through hole there. And you can see it's a little bit rusty here, but I'm just gonna treat that because it's still strong enough. Um, so I've left this section here, this big overhang. So if you have a look, um, you got these tabs, and so, come on camera, wake up, you got these tabs, um, and so I've got to figure out where the tab is on this, so I left all this so I can actually draw the tab in, and then I'll cut the excess off, and then that gives me the tab uh, that's on the other side, I should be able to measure it off the other side of the car and figure that out, but, yeah, anyway, look, I'm sure a body shop could do it a lot better, but we're there, it's strong as hell, it's not rusty, a little bit of filler, a little bit of smoothing and sanding, and hopefully no one will ever notice. But man, like that's um, probably about eight hours worth of work. I know it's crazy. I, I'm sure, as I said, a body shop could do it quicker, but while learning, it's, um, it's really time consuming just trying to get that right. Anyway, it's another patch done. Let's go tick it off the list. Here we go. Back left wheel arch. Another one crossed off. It's okay, there's only all that to do. <laughs> As is the way with these videos, time has passed. It's a few days later. Um, but I wanted to show you this. So I um, got a little payment from YouTube. I don't get a lot of money doing the YouTube thing. I get maybe a hundred bucks every couple of months, but you know, hey, hundred bucks, whatever. Um, last payment was $109 and I found this online for $109, so we broke even. $109 delivered. So this is a sheet metal bender. It can uh, bend up to 1.5 mil sheet metal. Um, yeah, and you just clamp it to the bench and then you've got this thick plate here that clamps down, put the sheet in it, and then you can just bend the angles you want. It's only a basic thing, but for some of the bits I need, this would be perfect. So I'm not too sure where it's gonna live yet. I'll probably just clamp it to the bench here for the time being. Um, and just use it while I need it. Um, yeah, pretty cool little thing. I'm, I'm happy with it, so we'll give that a go. And probably one of the things I need it for the most right now is on the boots. So let's kind of look at that. Okay, we're gonna do a bit of shaky cam here, but you can see this is the 
the boot. Let me zoom out a bit. So this is the boot of the AW11, and you can see it's got this lip around, and that's where the rubber seal uh, sits on all the way around. And you can see here, we're missing metal. We are missing part of the car. So obviously there is, I'm gonna to have to cut out here and here and replace this whole section here. Um, but there's some pretty complex bends there. Well, not complex, but I just need them to be good. So now you got sort of one there, one there, one there, and then a little, little angle, and then that piece. So that metal bend I just showed you will be perfect for this. So we can cut this out. Um, and yeah, we'll try and replace that one. Um, Cause it's, it's obviously seen, like as soon as you open the boot, you can see that it's pretty gross and I just don't like it. So we'll replace that. That'll be, uh, that'll be the next job. And there'll be some other bits on the car that will really benefit from this sheet metal bender. So very excited to use it. A few moments later. Hey guys, well, progress isn't progressing as quickly as I'd like. And this is always the way with these project cars. You have this thing in your head, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna smash this out. I've got so much time. And then life just gets in the way. As you all know, you're all busy, I'm sure. Uh, so as much as I would have liked to have had a lot more of the rust smashed out in this car, I have not. Uh, I have been progressing in other things. So um, if you aren't watching them yet, check out the shorts I'm doing on YouTube because I am doing little videos on my phone where I don't get time to pull out the proper camera and do proper videos. Um, just to update you guys, like I showed you getting this uh, supercharged deck lid, which is very cool. And I got a new bonnet, got a clutch pedal, stuff like that. So check out the shorts, it kind of fills in the gaps. Um, but I do want to show you some stuff. Now, in the last, well, in the first half of this video uh, that I filmed, I was really struggling with the welder. Now, this is not an easy car to weld. It's very thin steel, it's 0.8 steel. I'm not an experienced welder and it's, I'm learning on hard mode basically. But it's fine, I'm kind of getting there. However, the welder was giving me so many problems. It's an old coil style Unimi welder. Um, and you know what, an expert I'm sure could figure out the problems with it and get it dialed in. I'm really struggling with it and it's been having earthing issues where it's, it's not earthing properly for the start of the weld and then kind of gets its shit together. Um, and the other day I was just having so many problems with it, I just went, you know what, screw this. And I went down to Total Tools and I spoke to the guys down there and I bought a new little welder. Let me show it to you. Let me squish in here. So this is the old welder. That is the new one. It is tiny. It only weighs five kilos. It's a tiny little guy. It is a like a budget-friendly uh, beginner style welder, but that's what I am. I am a beginner welder. However, they review really, really well. So you can get the bigger units that do um, a lot more and have a lot more power for thicker steel and stuff. However, reading reviews online, I've read a lot of reviews and these guys, um, there's pros that buy these just to keep them in the back of their truck. So if they go out on site and they just need a small welder, it comes with a shoulder strap. They'll literally throw it over their shoulder and do repairs on site with these things. And they reckon it's unreal. So I thought, you know what? It's good enough for me. So I went and spoke to um, a chick down at Total Tools. She's got the older version of this, loves it. I'm like, sold. It's on sale for $400. Um, I showed her a picture of this old thing. She goes, yeah, that's pretty much the modern version of that. Just like it's, you know, this is like 45, 50 kilos. On five kilos, this does um, MIG, TIG, and stick. This only does MIG. Um, so it's it's a great little unit. It's, it's very easy to use too. It's got newer technology. You basically have one dial, you select your thickness of your steel, and then you just got one dial to change in your power. And I'm, yeah, I'm finding it much easier. So I've already done some repairs. Now, let me show you in the boot. Remember in the last video, I showed you the sill on the boot. Um, I'll put that footage up again where, yeah, basically it rusted out. So I used this to do that repair. Let me show you how it turned out. So look, it's not the most incredible uh, repair and there are still these tiny rust holes up the top here. Um, I couldn't really cut that back because I didn't want to damage the, the actual panel. So, but I have treated that rust and it's fine. So a little bit of Bondo or whatever to fix that up. Um, but the lip, I replaced the whole lip and that whole section and it's strong as it's really, yeah, it did a great job. And this has got a rubber seal that goes over the top. You won't even notice that. You'd have to go looking for it, honestly. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. So that was great. That was with the new welder. Um, much more finesse, that lower power. You can just, yeah, for stuff like this, real thin steel, it's been really good. I also did another little repair. Uh, over here, there was another little rust spot, so I replaced the lip on that. But yeah, it's been, it's been great. So look, we're getting there. Cool, and the other thing to show you is obviously my supercharged deck lid. Now, 
When I got this, I didn't realize that the latch on this is actual central to the car. However, the standard boot uh, deck lid or whatever it's called, the latch is over here. So this whole latch bracket is over about 110 mil. So that sucks. So what I had to do is basically chop that whole bracket out, move the whole thing over, weld it in and make another little bracket for underneath to make it all fit. But now this supercharged deck lid closes, fits perfectly. And if I go around and pop it, she opens up. So I'm really happy with that. Um, the job isn't amazing. I, yeah, I, I, I should have done it better. Like this is one of those things I kind of learned as I went and hindsight, it was spot welded on. I should have got a spot weld drill, undrill the spot welds. It would have come off a lot cleaner. I kind of cut it out. It's, it's messy. And I should have um, then welded the spot welds back on. Instead, I have welded around the edge of the bracket. It's nowhere near as clean, um, but it's done. So it is what it is. So we can bitch about it all we want. It is what it is. However, this whole bracket did have uh, seam seal all the way around it, which is the theme of this car. They've all got little bits of seam seal everywhere. So once I do some seam seal around that, like it was from the factory, you won't even be able to see those welds. It will look nice and neat. Coat of paint over the top, she's gonna look great. So not the optimum way to do that, but it is done. So we're good. Anyway, that's great. I've now got a supercharged deck lid. I love these deck lids. I think they look very cool. Um, and it will also allow more cooling for the spicier engine I've decided to put in this thing. But that is a story for once I have acquired said engine. Keep watching back for that one. So as you can appreciate, there is a lot of little rust repairs to do in this car. As I said, like I did that little bit there and that little bit there, and those bits took me hours, you know, like, and there's so many little bits like that throughout the car. So I'm not gonna film a lot of this. I would love to document all these little welds for you. I'm gonna try and show you a bit of before and after, either like in pictures or a bit of video, but I just want to get this done because I wanna move on to the next step of this car, which is basically getting all the running, all the um, rolling gear back in it. So all the suspension, all the control arms, I'm gonna get them all cleaned up, painted, new bushes, get that all in, get the last sort of panels fixed up and then get it ready for paint. And then after paint, we can start looking at fun engine things, engine and gearbox things which is very exciting, but I'm not gonna spoil any of that. We're gonna wait until I've got it all acquired. Um, so from here, I'm not too sure how much I'm gonna show you. I might show you a little bit more before this video ends, a um, bit of before and after, and then, uh, yeah, get into some fun stuff. Oh man, I almost forgot. Uh, one of the big things that did rock up for this car are these. So, these are patch panels for repairing rusty sections. Now, I found this mob in Canada of all places, that make uh, the patch panels for here, here on both sides. Um, and they do do a full rear quarter as well. But uh, look, if you lived in Canada or America, probably not that pricey. Once you do the exchange rate and pay the enormous shipping amount, um, it adds up pretty quick. So I got these two panels. So I've got one for the other side there and this one. So they're not that heavy, probably, I don't know, kilo and a half for the pair. Um, the shipping for those via air, so kind of normal air freight, was $350 American. That was the quote. And I said, there's no freaking way I'm paying that. Um, and the guy said, no, that's ridiculous. And so he looked into C. And so I still paid $90 American to get them shipped via C and it took two and a bit months, but they're here. Um, Look, they're not bad, they're not incredible, but it obviously takes out a lot of the guesswork with trying to make this stuff, because trying to make these complex shapes from scratch is very hard. So this one here is to replace, you can see here, we've got this rust hole here, and it's it's bad, like it's it goes all the way up to here, and there's not much left, it's a bit of a mess. So this guy goes there, you can see the, the line and the groove, and it fits there. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see from that angle, but the curve of the wheel arch isn't really a good match. However, I don't have to use the whole panel. You can see that bit actually is quite long and that gives you some steel to fold over, etc. They're basically a base to work off so you don't have to recreate all this from scratch. So I will be um, chopping out a lot of this, but I probably am gonna try and work off this line here 
and chop that out and then I'll replace that section, weld that on, tack those down there. And basically that'll replace this rusty hole. Now, as you can see, I got two of them and this is for the worst rust I've got on the car. Let's go and have a look on the other side. Okay, it's a bit tight over this side of the garage because we're against the wall. Um, but I'll, I'll get a different angle of this and you'll see that like this whole bottom section is it's non-existent. It is completely washed out and gone. So we have this full patch panel here that replaces that whole section. Um, once again, I'll chop out what I need and replace what I need, um, but that's gonna save a lot of time and effort. Once again, the wheel arch isn't perfect, but man, it's so much better than trying to recreate all this from scratch because that'd be near impossible. So thanks for watching guys. We'll cut the video there, otherwise it's gonna be super duper long. Look, I'm getting there. I'm learning how to weld and I am enjoying the process. And as I do get better, I am really enjoying welding. I can't wait to start welding like proper thick new steel. It's gonna be so easy compared to this thin old sheet metal. So that's exciting. I'm excited to start making some things from scratch, not just fixing bodywork. Um, but anyway, I do have a new episode coming out soon. I've bought a really cool piece of machinery. It's gonna help us with the floor pan and the frunk in this car. So remaking those panels. Check back for that. That's gonna be really cool. Um, also, I am getting a t-shirt, new t-shirt out that's going to be sick. I've got an artist working on design for me, which is going to be really cool. So I'm excited about that. He should have the artwork done by next week. So check back. Um, other than that, thanks for watching, guys. Check, like, subscribe, all those things. Whatever you want to do, I really appreciate it. And we will see you in the next episode.